I started looking into him a little bit. He's 21 years old. Kid's a freak. I think that he's gonna die an early death because he's abusing performance enhancing drugs. All of us are a little bit mind blown <laughs> by what we're seeing on a 21 year old. His mind is not even fully developed. He's 21 years old. He is gonna be the big thing that you're gonna see all across social media fitness. 21? Just a freak. Sam Sulik is a one of one. I don't think this guy is playing it safe. Who's Sam Sulik? Oh, dude, Jamie, you gotta look him up. How does one become a successful influencer? This is a question that so many people in the last few years have asked themselves. With the continued growth and prominence of social media in everyone's lives, the job and social status of being an influencer is one that's become just as coveted as doctor or lawyer. But to answer the leading question, there's no one formula. Anyone can put a camera on themselves and technically call themselves an influencer. But whether or not they can actually wield any influence is not only a different story, but an incredibly difficult task. That had Kai Sanat in it, which you can see now what looked as though could have been leaving the area. The social media ecosystem has its origins in the 1990s, and since then, there have been thousands of people who have been influential in their own way. The fitness community is no exception. From Instagram's early 2010 days with Jen Seltzer and Lex Griffin, to the mid-2010s rise of David Laid and Jeff Side, fitness influencers have been growing right in parallel with social media as a whole. The late 2010s also saw names like Lean Beef Patty and Summer Rae rise to prominence, while the early 2020s are seeing names like Shizzy and the Trend Twins blow up as well. So suffice to say, the model for succeeding in fitness has already been created and refined with each passing generation. Now, while the foundation for growth on social media was set by the OG influencers, the successes that came after them had a distinct advantage in terms of inspiration. With so many people to model themselves and their brands after, it's become impossible to discover an influencer in the fitness space that hasn't been inspired by another one in some way. Which is great and exactly what the community has needed to grow. But with that growth has come an incredible amount of oversaturation, and with that oversaturation, an immense amount of redundancy in content. Because it's almost impossible to scroll through Instagram or TikTok for more than 10 minutes without seeing the same exact trend. Which essentially makes the ability to stand out the key to instant success. Because in the early days of social media, it was as simple as having an outstanding physique. Once that was no longer enough, it became more about high production quality and creativity. And as time has gone on, so much more than what it used to take. So in the current social media climate, how do you stand out? Go against the grain. Offer a fresh take on a niche full of copycats. Well, the answer is to be Sam Sulek. Cool. I've seen some shit go down at the rec center, right? You think you've seen a busy gym? Have you ever seen 10 people working in on the leg extension at once? That shit will give you PTSD. Oh. Get, get it, fuck. You can do lighter weight. You gotta be fucking kidding. No, I don't mean to replicate his likeness and image, but to unapologetically be your authentic self while disregarding the status quo. Building your brand in a way that makes the content engaging while representing what your brand is all about. And Sam Sulek's meteoric rise to social media superstardom has exemplified that over the last year. From casual gym bro documenting his journey to the biggest name in the fitness space, his success has largely defied the conventional standards required to achieve virality. But to understand how Sam Sulek not only became one of the most beloved, but also highly criticized influencers, we have to take a look at how it all began. Sam Bishop Sulek was born February 7, 2002 in Delaware, Ohio to parents Mark and Sherry Sulek. His family's ancestry can be traced back to the Czech Republic and its northern neighbor Poland. Are you full of Polish? I think more like half. Okay. Maybe not, eh, close to half. But the last name is full, should be outside. Okay. Okay. What's the other half? Czech. Really? Czech. I think Czech and Slovakian. Yeah. And probably all sorts of other random stuff. Okay. Sam wasn't an only child though. He grew up with an older sister named Marissa and a younger brother named Mark. Their parents made sure that the Sulek kids would get an early foundation in sports, so they got them exposed at a very young age. Now, while most kids would take a liking to popular team and individual sports like football, soccer, karate, or even track and field, Sam developed an interest in something most of his friends probably knew nothing about, diving. He started very early at the age of 8 years old and spent the rest of elementary school and high school honing in on his craft. By middle school, he was one of the best divers among his age, getting the opportunity to compete in state and regional championships. But also by this time, his interests had expanded to include gymnastics as well. 
a discipline that required Sam to build upon his physique beyond just staying lean and agile. He now had to build some more strength. He attended Rutherford B. Hayes High School, right in his hometown, and among having to focus on school, he now had to prepare for a more competitive landscape for diving. He now had to take the steps to maximize his performance like all serious athletes do. So it would be sophomore year of high school that his friend Brandon would introduce him to lifting, and he quickly realized that it was something that he was into. Having a home gym set up, Sam would reportedly train for so long and so hard that his dad would need to constantly tell him to keep it down. He was on a mission, not just to become the best athlete that he could, but to see the results that his new passion would have on his performance over time. By 2018, he was competing for the Integrity Athletics Gymnastics Team, an elite gymnastics team in Columbus, Ohio. He even competed at one of the biggest gymnastics competitions in the state, the Blaine Wilson Sports Fest. Now, by junior year of high school, the combination of strength training and gymnastics had paid dividends for success on the diving platform. He had added a bit more muscle, endurance, and overall strength. He'd leave gymnastics behind so he could focus solely on diving, which led him to a fourth place finish at the Division I district meet held at Ohio State in February of 2019. This fourth place finish qualified him for the Ohio State Championships in swimming and diving held in Canton that same year. His 496.25 points was also a school record and good for the fifth best total out of all the competitors in the district. In an interview with Brad Emmerin of the Columbus Dispatch, in the weeks leading up to the state championships, Sam recounted his career as a diver up until that point. Sam went on to say, I actually began diving for the Delaware Aquatics Racing Team Stingrays when I was 8 years old, but that's just a summer program. Last summer, I started practicing at Ohio State and started to really focus on diving. I'm excited to make it to the state and I'm looking forward to next year already. I've seen a lot of improvement. Sam would go on to finish in 14th place at the 2019 OHSAA State Diving Championships with a final score of 384.85 points. Not having placed as highly as he would have liked, Sam got back to training harder and more intense than ever in an effort to cap off his high school career on a stronger note. So having qualified for states once again as a senior, Sam returned to Canton for his final meet of the year and got his redemption. Sam finished in 4th place, 10 places higher than the year before. He finished with a best dive of 414.05 points. With his high school career over, there were now some important decisions for Sam to think about. First was deciding what he wanted to do moving forward with his life. So, with his ambitions of pursuing higher education, Sam enrolled at the University of Miami in Ohio and decided to pursue a major in mechanical engineering. With his sister becoming a baker and his brother a golfer, his siblings had found their passions. Now, while Sam thought diving was his, that was going to change very soon. He continued diving his freshman year of college as in December of 2021, he'd compete at the 27th Annual Miami Invitational in Oxford, Ohio, finishing in second place. Four months later, he competed at the Mid-American Conference Championships where he didn't place. Now, having been a diver for a large portion of his life, he had reached a crossroads. He realized that the amount of extra effort he'd need to improve at the collegiate level was not consistent with his level of passion at the time. So, while Sam's interest in diving had started to fade, his interest in bodybuilding was ramping up. <laughs> oh shit, that's freaky. After his freshman year of college, he'd pivot from diving to bodybuilding, not really knowing where it would take him, but knowing that he wanted to explore that avenue with his newfound free time. His immersion into bodybuilding had started when he initially got into the gym, and as most people know, the gym is the gateway to discovering all avenues that the fitness industry has to offer. With every passing year and new influencer discovered, he'd delve deeper and deeper into bodybuilding lore while educating himself on anatomy and different training concepts. Among the figures who influenced him the most, was Callum Von Moger. I'm a man with a plan and a van. And my cousin's name's Dan. And I got a mate called Stan. And I like fruit from a can. Sam fell in love with Callum's training style and intensity that he brought to all of his workouts, an element of his brand that Sam would clearly draw a lot of inspiration from. As he was finding his groove en route to certified gym bro status, Sam had started to put on some decent muscle tissue. Transitioning from aquatic sports, which requires a lean frame, to strictly bodybuilding and strength represented a drastic shift in Sam's physique. But with his early progress indicating that he clearly had the potential to put on some solid mass, his love for training would only grow. Now, most fitness influencers who commit to their goal document their journeys early on, typically without truly knowing whether or not they'll blow up. However, that early documentation is meant to serve as a collage or archive of that person's journey from the beginning, not necessarily for everyone else, but usually for themselves. But with the anxieties associated with social media, compounded by the sensitivity of the fitness industry specifically, Sam wasn't initially ready to post his fitness journey. 
Despite having made progress, he wasn't confident enough with his physique to start posting. Instead, he wanted to wait until he was around 190 before getting comfortable with the idea of posting his physique online. So, he'd spent a year focused on growth and progress in the gym before posting his first TikTok video on July 25th, 2022. It was one of those trendy Giga Chad videos at the time, showing Sam's transition from lifting wraps to grips, signifying that only the most eloquent and evolved lifters understand that grips are more practical than straps. It was a run-of-the-mill video not too far off from what you would see from other content creators. But what was just the first video of Sam dicking around on TikTok would be the first brick in the foundation of what he was about to build. Sam would go on and continue to post educational and motivational TikToks around his fitness journey while infusing his opinions around gym culture. He'd add humor to his content, which resonated because of how relatable it was. And as anyone who succeeds at making content knows, that relatability is the key to finding your audience. Take this one for example. Got corrected on my form today. Stopped listening after he said full body workout. Or, doctor used to tell me to get big and strong. Now he says my knees are going to explode. Or, you wouldn't let someone steal your wallet. Don't let them steal your last rep. He was slowly building a steady amount of engagement and a small but loyal following. His content clearly exemplified that of a true gym rat who lived in the gym. Attracting a lot of fellow gym rats alike. However, a big part of what made Sam so appealing early on was his size. He was building a physique that very few could attain at his age while moving some serious weight that looked effortless. And anybody who was lucky enough to stumble on Sam in the early days could clearly see that this kid had the potential to blow up, not just figuratively, but physically as well. The combination of mindless humor combined with Sam's massive physique being in focus made for the perfect recipe for steady and moderate growth. He was also starting to generate discussions, regardless of whether they were positive or negative, an aspect to his engagement that would continue up until this day. But more to come on that later. Now, a lot of his satirical content generated the most discussions, as most people couldn't gauge whether or not he was being serious. Either way, they were helping his algorithm. Now, his impressive amount of muscle for a college student aside, there were certain aspects of Sam's content that was starting to draw a lot of attention. In some of his TikTok videos, he could be seen bleeding from his face, something which made myself and a lot of others have to re-watch to confirm. But it was in fact blood. The bleeding was never explained or acknowledged but could only be due to the acne on his face. It made people start to question whether or not he was natural, which made sense given his growing exposure. But for the time being, this would be relatively insignificant as Sam was still just another gym bro on TikTok, and steroid use was as common of a topic as drinking water. What's also a common topic among gym bros is dieting and nutrition, and this would eventually become one of the main pillars of the Sam Sulek brand. As on September 9th, 2022, Sam would make his first commentary video around dieting specifically, where he'd show his followers what he fueled his body with to get so big. Can I get uh, two spicy chicken sandwiches, two double cheeseburgers, and uh, a large fry? And from this point forward, he'd sprinkle in videos of him sharing his personal commentary and viewpoints on gym culture, giving his modest amount of followers more insight into his personality. From his struggles with balancing school and the gym to his love for goth girls, Sam was an open book. So he kept posting, and every new post solidifying his conformity to the meathead stereotype, but with a lot of quirks. Rejecting overcomplicated science and interactions with females while promoting ego lifting, Sam's early growth on social media was the representation of the new wave of Gen Z, the next generation of passionate gym goers. And without even realizing it, he was primed to be at the forefront. See, up until this point, he had consistently been averaging around 15 to 30,000 views, with certain outlier videos hitting closer to 100,000. And posting anywhere from 1 to 4 times a day, he was absolutely flooding his TikTok with content. However, Sam would have two videos go viral in back-to-back -back months, hitting over 300,000 and 600,000 respectively. As his average views on TikTok would increase, the TikTok algorithm would slowly start to push Sam to the masses as he'd have two videos gain over 800,000 views in December of 2022, setting the stage for his 2023, the year of Sam Sulek. 2023 is the year of the 200 pounders. The beginning of 2023 was business as usual, as Sam would kick the year off with a posing video, something that he would moderately sprinkle into his content. However, as he got more confident with his size and aesthetics, he'd get more comfortable posing, which is consistent with what conventionally grows any fitness brand. He would also bluntly call out the skinny influencer archetype, using Alex Eubank as an example, sending strays his way whenever possible. Let's see Andrew Eubanks hit this weight. 
But as we all know, that level of self-exposure will naturally come with criticism, especially on a platform like TikTok with a seemingly infinite amount of reach. Almost every time he appeared shirtless in his videos, the comments section would be split with people who were both impressed with his size and critical of the acne on his body, something that assured most of the people that came across his page that he was not building his physique naturally. And as Sam would get bigger, both literally and figuratively, that talking point would only expand. Now by January of 2023, Sam's average TikTok views would rise to around 40 to 70k, with increased engagement on every post. Having officially established a consistent audience, Sam got to the point where he was ready to expand his brand into long-form content. For the people who had been able to identify with him, they wanted to see more of Sam beyond his 10 to 20 second videos. So with his TikTok having built his experience as a content creator, he got confident enough to transition to YouTube, a transition that is either hit or miss for most TikTokers, but a transition that a lot of people wanted from Sam. He posted his first YouTube video on January 19, 2023, titled Spring Bulk Day 1, Legs. The first video documenting his impending bulking phase. This video was the blueprint for what would become Sam's recipe for success, simplicity. For some of you, this has been long awaited. Others of you, perhaps a little bit less so. Either way, here we are. He didn't have a script and there was little planning that went into the structure of it. He was just taking the audience through his workout while rambling about whatever came to his mind and dropping knowledge on his methodology whenever it made sense. It's definitely a good idea to warm up the quads a little bit on leg extensions and glute squats. I always do, just get a little more blood flow, get them all activated, whatever. This feels better. He ended the workout by showing off his absolutely vascular legs as a means of showing where he was starting off in the bulk. And in a monologue that would encapsulate what he was all about, Sam mandated a bulk to anyone under 200 pounds and declared 2023 the year of the 200 pounders. If you weigh less than 200 pounds right now, I'm mandating that you start a bulk. All right. 2023 is not the year of whatever. It's not the year. It's not a new year, new me. 2023 is the year of the 200 pounders, okay? He'd also drop some valuable advice and commentary for all of his fellow gym bros. If you've got a little, just a little itch, if you've got a little something in the back of your mind that's telling you, you know, I could get a little bigger. You know, oh, that guy's kind of big. He's a little bigger than me, fine. Now's your sign, all right? Now, this video currently sits at over 990,000 views, but we have no way of knowing how well it performed at the time that it was released, as it was Sam's first video and he had less than 500 subscribers. But we can safely assume that a large portion of the viewers are more recent. But when we isolate the few comments that were actually posted around the time of the video's release, it clearly showed that his audience really believed in him. A few days later, he'd post his chest day, then a few days after that, his back day, and the day after that, his arm day. He had gotten into the habit of posting every two to three days or so while maintaining the simplicity across his channel by completely abandoning conventional YouTube practice. Shiny custom thumbnails that get attention, attractive titles meant to build intrigue, pass and pass. Sam kept it to what his goal was, what day he was on, and what muscle group he was working, and giving you a simple screenshot from the video as the thumbnail. Now, from the outside looking in, this was content creator suicide, and the opposite of what most are advised to do when starting out on YouTube. It was very easy to look at Sam's videos at the time and think that he had no idea how to maximize the growth of his channel. But was that the case? Or was he playing 60 chess with his marketing? With YouTube becoming the home to highly produced and over-edited content across every niche, personality and substance have become the only factors necessary to set yourself apart. So the same way Sam rejected conventional fitness principles and science, he kept that same energy when it came to the content and marketing. And people absolutely loved it. Being in college obviously made it difficult for him to afford any high quality gear, so his consistency with what he had was very relatable to his core demographic and a quality that a lot of people were starting to admire. He was also getting the confirmation he needed from his TikTok audience who were following him over to YouTube that his videos were good. Obviously not in terms of production, but in terms of substance. They realized that as much as they loved his short form content, they loved his long videos as well. They'd quickly realized that there was so much more to Sam than just memes and posing. Home, get back to the crib. Actually, you know, I'm, I'm doing a Goodwill stop. What am I saying? Uh, all these T-shirts. Every time I have an oversized T-shirt, it's just from fucking Goodwill. You know, this shit isn't that hard. Plus, I mean, three bucks. 
It's a steal. It's come to my attention that there's a bit of a, a subculture of lifters that don't like pre-workout because they don't want to be dependent on it. They don't want to forget their pre-workout and then, you know, feel like they're going to be tired during the lift. As far as I'm concerned, it's just not optimal. And as he'd expanded his reach onto YouTube, his TikTok would really start to blow up. By just the end of January 2023, Sam was already seeing exponentially more exposure on TikTok than he had been the few weeks prior. Because by the beginning of February, he would see his average view count rise to around 100k with a higher frequency of videos going viral. But while his base on TikTok was helping him grow his YouTube, he'd continue to see the consequences of that kind of exposure. Because in seemingly every video, especially the ones where he's throwing off his physique, people are making comments about his alleged gear use. Comments that were gaining a ton of traction in their own right. I think the gear might be what's breaking the sanity, but yeah buddy, bro meant start trend cycles and lift. Bro was on copious amounts of trend. Does this include taking trends such as yourself? Trendy thing is possible! It was non-stop. Now, these comments were from his first TikTok video to hit a million views or more. But even in the videos with significantly smaller view counts, the trend comments were still prevalent. My guy is in trending. My man is taking three times the amount of all PEDs and acting like a smaller lifter might not know how to train. Hell, even his birthday post had a trend comment. But another comment that stuck out in that post was Sam responding to a fan's mention of him competing, to which he said he was considering it after this bulk. Now, of all the anabolic steroids out there, what was it about Trend specifically that had everybody convinced that Sam was on it? Well, it was because he presented two of the biggest side effects of Trend, severe acne and cardiovascular issues. Now, while very few people know the side effects of Trend, let alone the side effects of other anabolic steroids, it was the few lifters that were knowledgeable in pharmacology that created this trend of accusing Sam of being on Trend. Now, the comments on his YouTube channel were very different because that channel encapsulated so much more of his knowledge and training philosophy that TikTok couldn't. So despite what anybody may have thought about his gear usage, it was abundantly clear that Sam was a guy who worked extremely hard in the gym. That much was undeniable. People loved his raw and unfiltered opinions as well as his authenticity. His content brought people back to the early days of YouTube when content was a lot more intimate and thoughtful. If you're taking my advice and let's say you emulated a set just like that and some old head told you that's not how you do it, uh, don't be mean, just say, all right, thanks, man. But do not, do not listen to him. You know, if you've watched the other videos, you know I said some shit about Oh, I've been skipping shoulders, but that goes against my whole fucking moral code of getting huge as possible. <laughs> so shoulders are going back in full. I never really understand why you wouldn't use safeties if you're going to be squatting even anything over two plates. And uh, yeah. It's just that it doesn't make sense to me. You know, you can't necessarily predict when you're just gonna get fucked up out of nowhere. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh shit. That's freaky. This style is what led to such strong and consistent engagement for such a new channel. It was a breath of fresh air for a lot of people in the fitness community. By the end of February, Sam's average view counts had skyrocketed to around 200 to 300K while hitting more viral videos in the millions incredible progress considering he had only been building his brand for seven months. But in those seven months, he had been extremely dedicated to his content while remaining true to himself. His reach and influence was something even he wasn't fully aware of until he'd see it in action. By this point, Sam had a little over 8,000 subscribers on YouTube and was just shy of 60,000 followers on TikTok, while also seeing steady and exponential growth on both platforms. And then the month of March happened. See, in March of 2023, Sam would see his account start to gain traction in a way they hadn't before. It's difficult to go back and pinpoint an exact catalyst as he had been equally as consistent since the beginning. 
But what does stick out distinctly is his physical growth and his persona. Sam was getting noticeably bigger as the bulk had clearly been working, while doubling down on his equal lifting first and girls last attitude to gym culture. He was a walking masterclass in how to recognize aspects of your personality that are different and highlight them instead of suppressing them. Further adding to his uniqueness, he could frequently be seen in his content daring to train at that forbidden purple place, a gym most aspiring fitness influencers tended to avoid due to its stigma within the fitness community. Well, Megan, we're not a gym. We're Planet Fitness. Bow! Boom! Bang, 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 bang! Bang, bang, bang! Okay, um, here's the strength circuit. I lift things up and put them down. That didn't matter to Sam, though, because he intentionally made it a point to train there to show that a membership to a high-quality gym was not necessary for everyone, and for him, it was just fine. But what made this so ironic is the fact that, based on the Forbidden Purple Place's own policy and brand identity, Sam Sulek is the exact type of gym goer they intentionally do not market to. He is quite literally the lunk that the lunk alarm was designed to shame and embarrass. So I think it's fair to say that part of his intent in training there is rooted in a little bit of trolling. Not necessarily their targeted demographic at a Planet Fitness, a fucking approaching a freak just walking around with a tripod talking to himself. I can understand it. I can understand it. He was also doing a great job sticking to the content that he knew was going to get the most engagement. It was his formula, and when he finally mastered it, the algorithms had caught on and put him in front of the exact types of lifters that his content was meant for. Now, by the end of March, Sam was pulling views closer to half a million on average, with three TikTok videos hitting one million views in the same week. So if he wasn't viral before, he was definitely there now. In the month of April, he reached 96,000 followers on TikTok and 33,000 subscribers on YouTube, with his YouTube growth being the most impressive. This signified that his TikTok followers were not just fickle people looking for a quick fix. They were an ego-lifting army of bandits who were showing that they were willing to invest more time in Sam's journey, something which most fitness influencers honestly can't say. He was turning the industry on its head. A puffy-haired kid showcasing identical wardrobe and very little creativity? It was unimaginable to a lot of people how he was becoming so popular. But it was clear that the distinct features that helped propel Sam to his early success in 2023 was the physique he had for a 21-year-old. He was clearly one of the few Gen Z fitness influencers who had hit the genetic lottery and he knew it. So not capitalizing on that while he was young was just not an option. Now, as I've mentioned before, the very thing that was making him viral was the same thing that was leading to this unending scrutiny, his physique. While the majority of his new followers were people that genuinely wanted to join the journey, some people were purely there for a spectacle and something to talk about. Either way, it didn't matter to Sam because he had just about made it. By the end of May, he'd break the 100k barrier on TikTok, and by June, he was already at a quarter of a million followers. During his span, his YouTube subscriber count would double, going from 58,000 subs in May to over 113,000 subs by June, earning him that coveted silver play button. Let's do a little bit of a demonstration as it were. See if my, uh, see if my bodybuilding training has translated to any extra athleticism. With this rapid success, it was only a matter of time before he would have major players in the industry interested in signing him. Sure, he was a big name at the time, but not big enough that brands would be chomping at the bit to sign him. However, there was one man who was quick to recognize Sam's immense value, Fuad. See, Fuad Abiyad is an IFBB legend who successfully transitioned to the media in his retirement. His brand laid the groundwork and created a lane for retired pros who weren't megastars like Ronnie and Jay to still be able to provide value to the community once inactive. He had built the Real Bodybuilding Podcast to lend a voice to other retired and active bodybuilders and has become one of the most successful media brands in bodybuilding. But in accordance with his podcast, one of his most prized possessions is his brand, Hostel. Selling supplements, clothing, and lifting gear, Hostel was an integral part of Fuad's empire and a huge driving force behind his success. Having signed athletes like Nick Walker, Samson Dada, Hostel was exclusively a pro bodybuilder's brand. But to Fuad, Sam was more than worth an exception. He embodied exactly the type of athlete that he wanted on his team and saw a massive opportunity to bolster both his brand and Sam's. But exactly how much value Hostel provided to Sam is up for debate. Now, knowing that it was only a matter of time before the rest of the industry caught on, Fuad made it his mission to make Sam Sulek a Hostel athlete. 
Somebody put me onto this kid named uh, Sam Sulik. That's Sam. That, how do you spell that? Oh, I've heard it's his name. S U L E K. Uh, yeah, I've heard his name. I started looking into him a little bit. He's 21 years old. Kid's a freak. Yeah. Most of the guys we look at to sign are usually, you know, 30 and up. Yeah. It'd be nice to sign somebody like at the start of their career, like, mm -hmm. you know, getting going. Oh, he's got a big YouTube. Yeah, I looked at his YouTube. It's nuts. He's like 220,000 subscribers. He's, he's, where is he? I think he's in Columbus. You should find him. Message him. Message him. Be like, listen, listen, listen. Message him. Be like, hey, we're we're hostile. Hostile teams in Columbus. We, we're in. How, Ohio. how big's Ohio though? Just say, just I don't know, but just say we're in Ohio. Yeah. Are you are you training today? We want to come by and catch a workout. Do you want me to? I'd like. Yeah, I'd like. To, I'd like to see what this kid looks like in person. You really want me to message him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send him a DM. We linked up with Sam Sulik for a workout. Um, kind of been watching this guy a little bit over the course of the last few weeks, and he's really impressive. I don't know how big he is, I don't know how tall he is, but I figure we'll go in, catch a workout. I'm gonna make Ben put him through the ringer and uh, see what he's made of. Maybe he could be a hostile athlete, or maybe he'd just be a cool kid to work out with. All right, like I said, he's 21. How tall? Like 5'11. 5'11. A little bit of change. How, to, how big? How, what's the weight? Weight right now at 245. All right. Come on. Good. Our, our show first. Holy yeah, I gotta do the first 21 one. years old. Oh, damn. Oh. All right, all right, let me call him up. Do a front, do a front relax. Front relax? Yeah. Hey, tell me how to do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Drop the shoulder. Lean forward. So open the shoulder back. Pull this. Yeah, there you go. Like that. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Posing. I got Paulie here, IFBB judge, and Ben, who's Pretty been around, experience. been around pros and coached pros for a number of years now, and all of us are a little bit fucking mind blown <laughs> by what we're seeing on a 21-year-old. Uh, in July of 2023, Fuad would announce his signing of Sam Sulek to the Hostel brand. Sam, I'd like you to, uh, I'd like to offer, you have to obviously take some time and think potentially, but <laughs> oh yeah, I'd like to offer you a contract with Hostel. Oh shit. So. For full disclosure, for those of you who don't know, Sam is a Hostel athlete. He signed on about a month ago and uh, things are going great. So. Now, given his massive popularity, it was an interesting choice, considering he himself was on a greater trajectory than the brand. And it was abundantly clear that Hostel stood to benefit way more from Sam's massive exposure than Sam stood to benefit from the brand. But to be fair, this was his first big break, and an opportunity that was very hard to pass up given how hard he had been grinding. Fuad also didn't take Sam joining the team for granted. The pair immediately got to work on collaborations as Sam would appear on multiple Hostel videos across their social media. And the Sam Sulek effect was immediately evident. He single-handedly boosted the view counts on Hostel's YouTube and TikTok videos, bringing in an overwhelmingly greater amount of views than they averaged. His first appearance on the channel brought in 327,000 views, which doubled the view count of their previous 10 videos combined. His next video on the channel would have the same effect, once again gaining 10 times more views than the average video. Signing Sam was immediately paying dividends for the Hostel brand, and it made sense. The kid had amassed over 400,000 TikTok followers and 200,000 subscribers on YouTube while gaining thousands of new subscribers and followers a day. But wait a second, what about Instagram? Well, up until this point, Sam had completely forgone growing on Instagram due to his lack of interest in posting pictures, something which Instagram is obviously catered towards. But understanding that he needed to broaden his reach, he created his Instagram account in July of 2023, instantly gaining over 130,000 followers despite not having any posts at the time. But alas, that was the power that his name carried. The combination of his trajectory and his extremely dedicated fan base instantly made him more valuable than he had realized. And while he was experiencing more success than he could ever dream of in the summer of 2023, while drawing comparisons to the late great Rich Piana, nobody expected what would happen that upcoming fall. He does not look like a healthy young man. In the fall of 2023, Sam Sulek's name would become even more viral than it already was. 
Having gained another 200,000 TikTok followers by August, he was seeing an average view count closer to a million per video. It was a level of success we hadn't seen in the fitness industry before, especially not this quickly. But what was it that gave Sam this second massive wave of virality in August? Well, it was none other than YouTube's Natty or Not authority, Coach Greg. Just the more I looked into it, the more I was like, are you kidding me? Do, do people really think that this is natural? You see, while Sam Sulek was having his own effect, Coach Greg had already established his own for a while at that point. Bridging the generational gap between younger and older lifters with his content, Greg Doucette had become a commentator with massive influence in the industry. So, it was only a matter of time before Sam came across his radar. And when he did, it was content magic. And I do believe this guy is very intelligent. He speaks eloquently. He seems to know what he's saying. But that is not what captures the audience's attention. Rather than putting out valid content that would help the audience, he chooses to do the opposite. And for him, that is a smart, intelligent business maneuver. Please start ego lifting. Obviously, you have to know that this is a joke. There is no way that a guy at 21 years of age with this kind of muscle that believes that you should just be ego lifting in the gym. Then you should be lifting heavier weights than you should with improper lifting technique. But he makes that video and it goes viral. 21 years of age, already severe acne, probably on abusive doses of performance enhancing drugs. But in comparison, had he stayed natural, does anyone think he wouldn't have an amazing physique? I think he's very intelligent. I think he has an amazing physique. And I think that he's going to die an early death because he's abusing performance enhancing drugs. Sorry, telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. Do you really think it's safe to take performance enhancing drugs at an early age and go on to becoming a Mr. Olympia? A competitor and have no long-term side effects really you all think that so please sam be cautious he would be the first major fitness commentator to address sam publicly but he most certainly wouldn't be the last coach greg's video absolutely took off as they usually do and in early august he'd post a youtube short about sam which led to one of the most viral pieces of content on his entire channel amassing almost 10 million views as of now. You see the visual changes in his face. He does not look like a healthy young man, only 21 years of age. And based on his current size and the side effects that are clearly visible, I do believe he's on high doses. So with Coach Greg experiencing the Sam Sulak effect for himself, he realized that the topic of Sam warranted way more content. On August 10th, 2023, Fuad Abiyad's YouTube channel, Fuad Abiyad Media, would post a full day of eating video for Sam, followed by a grocery haul video four days later on Hostel's channel. The videos detailed what Sam got for groceries and what his diet consisted of, giving fans a much clearer picture of his nutrition. And it was shocking, to say the least. Uh, 240 grams of carbs, and then what? 70 grams of protein? So I'll just drink this on the way home. All right, so the quart of chocolate milk is clearly empty. So I think just a big ass bowl of cinnamon toast crunch and milk will be perfect. Uh, cheeseburger with mustard, lettuce, uh, ketchup, and I should have it. Mustard, lettuce, ketchup, and a medium fry and a large drink. All right. About 4,700. You know, pretty much I want to hit at least 52 ish. 11 grams of fat, 22 grams of carbs in each of these. There's three grams of protein, but I mean, it's what, it's from dough. So that plus, I don't know how large these cups are, but maybe you know, four cups of milk. That's gonna be another 30 grams of protein, 30 of fat, and uh, almost 50 carbs, 48 carbs. That's perfect. I can take my vitamins and go to bed. Now, while Sam had discussed his diet on his own YouTube channel in the past, he hadn't made it a habit to dive deep into all of his nutrition. So to reveal that the majority of what he ate was far from what was expected for a conventional bodybuilder made everyone's head explode, including Coach Greg, who would make a video on Sam's diet that would unsurprisingly go viral. Close to this and actually be healthy. It is not true. This was a horrendous diet. One of the worst diets I have ever seen. And remember, this is a very smart and intelligent kid. But in watching this video, you have to be thinking, how could such an intelligent human being eat such a horrendously awful diet? I mean, how much food do we eat before going to the gym to actually have a good workout?
and I don't want these people to copy this diet. They're thinking calories in, calories out. As long as I'm eating a surplus, all the junk, the bulk, I could also put on more muscle. This is not the way. And so rather than going home and eating a healthy meal, they then go to Five Guys and have a cheeseburger, fries, and drink. Really? This is the off-season diet they were primed to promote to the world? The biggest fitness critic talking about the hottest rising fitness influencer, it was a recipe for a social media takeover. Because everyone who didn't already know about Sam wanted to learn more about the mass monster who ate cereal for breakfast, five guys for lunch, and was still able to maintain that low of a body fat percentage. Now, a week after Coach Greg's criticism of his diet, Renaissance Periodization would critique Sam's workouts on his massive platform amassing over a million views on that video. Yeah. Another problem with such inconsistent range of motion is it's very difficult to determine where failure is. He seems to just be like, when he's really, really tired, he gives up, which is also totally cool, but it can create some variation training session to training session. And ideally what you want to do is have as little variation as possible, but for the variables you control. Yeah, well, that was curious. The range of motion is very low. If he grabbed closer together, automatically, this is all range generated for the back musculature. He's dropping that eccentric real fast. Quick reversal. Oh, man. Peck injuries are real, folks, especially when you're on steroids. Hot calling the kettle black, but it's just true. Um, especially when you're young and growing really fast, your pec muscle size can outpace your tendons temporarily. And uh, doing rapid eccentrics on an inclined barbell has, in prior cases, resulted in devastating pec injury. I would not want to see this happen to Mr. Sam, who seems like a real small guy. So... This criticism of Sam sparked a mass conversation around the influencer that took over the fitness industry unlike anything we had ever seen before. Some people fell in love with him and became absolute fans, while some were just intrigued by him. And then you had others who absolutely hated him and everything he represented. While he had already been criticized by two massive names in the industry, it would only continue with Athlean X, who's been one of the biggest names around for years. In late August, he'd also chime in with his own video expressing concern for Sam. You need to have, and I preach this all the time, you need to have a stable foundation. If he was my son right now, I would be terrified. Yeah. Every single day, I would be terrified about the path he's going down and even about the things that appears he's doing right now. I'd love to see this kid succeed for the next 80 years and beyond. My concerns are that that won't happen. That won't happen. I saw a comment on a video that this kid said that he showed his mother, who was a former competitive bodybuilder, who had abused steroids. They showed him Sam. Yep. And she said, don't get attached to him. Regardless of what camp anyone was in, you could not actively be in the fitness space and not hear or see Sam's influence daily. He was inescapable and had developed a cult of personality that hadn't been seen since the rise of Chris Bumstead. He'd have multiple fan and satellite accounts now reposting his content and blowing up as well, giving him the best kind of free promo. Combine this with the exposure that Coach Greg and Athlean X's criticism gave him, Sam was at a million TikTok followers by September of 2023 and over 700,000 subscribers on YouTube. He had also gained over 200,000 new followers on his Instagram in September upon posting his first picture, promising his fans that there would be more to come. His name became so valuable that anything Sam Sulek adjacent would go viral on its own. The simple mention of his name was almost a cheat code for views, because by this point, he was one of, if not the most polarizing fitness influencer of all time. Sam Sulek. The man, the myth, His diet the... is atrocious. That man's diet is... But he looks scary. fantastic. It, he looks great. I will say that, like, the acne and, like, breathing is concerning. It's a little <laughs> scary for 21. It's, it's scary for 21 because he'll be sitting in his car just, like, really breathing heavy. And I love okay. his videos and everything. He works insanely hard. Like, he works... He, he's working a failure. He's... The faces he's making, you can just tell. He's putting everything he has into his reps. Right. He's a funny guy. I love his content. It's relatable because he's just talking to you, like, you're right there in the room with him. I could put on his video and it's just like I'm in the gym with one of my friends just talking, hanging out. Like it just feels like it's personal. The first point of contention was his alleged gear use. Weighing over 230 pounds at 21 years old, many felt that Sam was putting his life at risk while spreading a dangerous message to the youth that excessive gear use could yield his results. He was growing fast, almost too fast, and that had a lot of people concerned, especially the science-based lifters that he had built a career making fun of. Speaking of science-based lifters, they represent a large majority of the successful fitness influencers and commentators alike. Primarily because you can't argue science. It's cut and dry. And Sam's outright rejection of it was another point of contention among his detractors and fans. 
Many felt that Sam's training principles and methodology was a dangerous message to the impressionable youth, because ego lifting and rejecting science rarely works out for you when you're natural. What also rarely works out for natural lifters is eating whatever you want, which was the third point of contention. Entire arguments would form around the topic of whether or not Sam's diet was viable for most, given the scientific aspect of nutrition. You know, in a, in a bulking or a dieting context, uh, calories are calories. You know, as long as you have a reasonable distribution of macros, right, that's your carbs, fats, proteins, then, I mean, I think you can kind of eat whatever the hell you want. His followers had fully conformed to his simple ideology of calories in versus calories out, while his critics emphasized the importance of the quality of calories. It was an all-out bloodbath in comment sections, which served for some hilarious entertainment in itself. And may the Christian Lord guide my hand against your Roman popery. Prepare to receive the true Lord. Yeah! <laughs> The passion behind this divide is what made him the most polarizing fitness influencer in the industry. And with Coach Greg having gotten the ball rolling on the Sam Sulek case study, everyone else would follow suit. I'm not saying that you shouldn't take advice from Sam, but uh, I would be very hesitant to do so because when you're young, you're dumb. That's how you become old and wise. It's just a camera on a tripod and he's just doing his thing and sharing his thoughts, which is very simple, but... It, it kind of, uh, after watching it, it makes sense why it works. And though he hasn't said so outright, it's likely he started using PEDs in his teenage years, judging by the extremity of his transformation alone. Here is his progress from 2019, when he was a swimmer, to now. I think he ate the liver king. As Coach Greg would continue to make content on Sam, big names like Shredded Sports Science and Seth Ferrosi would continue the conversation. I, I will say this, anybody that is a young man like Sam, Whenever I was 21 years old, I, I had a good grasp on, on training. I fucking loved it. My diet was not that great. Sounds very similar. He looks like, he's, his, he, looks like he trains hard. Um, his diet, <laughs> it didn't sound too good, but it's working for him. And so he's part of this sort of train insane, comedic posts, brutal discipline and focus type movement towards young guys that we see on TikTok. And so that does have a lot of good in terms of motivating young people towards their gym goals. But of course, the other side of that is this is a guy who's 21 years old, clearly abusing PEDs, which of course brings about health risks because we've normalized the abuse of PEDs to people of very young ages through well, mainly social media. Now, all of this conversation around Sam Sulek would magnify the darkest aspect of human nature, that being our innate pleasure in watching self-destruction. It's the reason why TLC has been able to generate billions of dollars in revenue off of the suffering and exploitation of people whose lives should not be televised. The same reason why Dr. Phil and Oprah Winfrey have been able to generate billions of dollars off of televising family trauma and toxicity aspects of strangers' lives that have no business being on air. Because unfortunately, we find entertainment watching these car wrecks from afar, especially when the participants are willing and complicit in presenting that to us. So just like in the case of Sam Sulek, many people saw him as a car accident waiting to happen, a kid self-destructing for the sake of likes and clout, a kid who many felt was recklessly putting his life in danger. So the idea of watching him slowly kill himself with steroids highlighted that sick pleasure we get from being bystanders of self-destruction. And this would be a major factor in the influx of new viewers across all of his social media platforms. By October of 2023, he was headed to the moon. He'd hit 1.5 million followers on TikTok, 1.6 million on Instagram, and break the million subscriber barrier on YouTube while averaging hundreds of thousands of views per video. By this time, even more fan pages were popping out of the woodwork, getting him in front of an even bigger and broader audience. It was his time, and all those people who saw him a year prior and knew he'd blow up were elated to see how far he had come, because nobody could have predicted even that level of fame so quickly. And in November of 2023, he'd land on the radar of one of the biggest media personalities in the world. Who's Sam Solik? Oh, dude, Jamie, you gotta look him up. Now what does he weigh now? 237 in 2023. That's crazy. Yeah. That's so crazy. That's so much weight. And I don't know how, I think he's super young. He looks young. Yeah. I think it's worth discussing. Fuck. Bro, you can hear the steroids Shit. in his voice. <laughs> <laughs> like he's it's like he's gargling at steroids. That's, I think people can be inspired by that and be like, Fuck yeah. hey, I need to, 
I'm not going to be a, a freak, but I can push harder. Also, it might make them take a road trip to Mexico to fill up the trunk. I don't know. <laughs> I know. It, it, you know, here for a, a good time, not a long time. Well, that's definitely that's, the case with folks like that. Yeah. You know, because a lot of those guys, you know, the, those really big guys, they have real problems. Joe Rogan's brand had kind of built its own effect over the last decade, bringing in mass exposure to anyone he ever talked about due to his audience being so mainstream. So when he talked about Sam Sulek, it was a massive deal. Because Joe Rogan rarely talks about specific fitness influencers. In fact, the biggest bodybuilder he ever interviewed was Ronnie Coleman, and the biggest fitness influencer, More Place, More Dates. But with the trajectory that Sam is already on, combined with him being able to reach mainstream radars, I wouldn't put it past him to become one of the few fitness influencers to end up on the Joe Rogan experience. Now, present day conversations around Sam Sulek are just as intense as ever as he's still growing and grinding his way to the top of the industry. Regardless of how anyone may feel about his principles and ideology, it's very hard to criticize his character because Sam, despite having his methods, has made sure to do right by his fans. See, as his brand got bigger, there came a point where he got a better grasp of his influence. And when he reached that point, he started doing a better job of clearly outlining when he's trolling versus when he's being serious. Because he understood the immense responsibility that he had to keep his fans properly informed. He's never deliberately lied to them, nor has he actively tried to lead them down a false path. He's made it abundantly clear throughout his content and advice that it should all be taken with a grain of salt. Now, I'm not telling you what to do, I'm just telling you what you could do. So I think we can go ahead and leave it at that. Just, I mean, that's just me. That's not necessarily a recommendation. I'm just kind of telling you what I've been doing this whole lifting journey per se. He never felt a need to clap back at big names like Coach Greg who continues to make videos about him to this day because he recognizes that they're not only entitled to their opinion, but valid in their criticism. He fully understands that he's a genetic freak and knows that there are very few like him. So he's made it a point to let his followers know that his diet and some of his training methods are not necessarily optimal for everyone. And that right there is exactly why, despite how wrong anyone may think he is, you cannot deny his authenticity. In an age and time where fitness influencers mislead their fans by lying about their eating habits and their gear use, Sam's honesty and transparency has been a huge breath of fresh air, a diamond in a sea of snake oil salesmen. And that in essence is a large contributing factor to how he got to where he is today regardless of how he got there. To say that Sam Sulek's rise has been meteoric would be nothing short of an understatement, because he's become one of the very few fitness influencers to ever gain this level of mainstream interest and appeal. To have been in the content game for under two years and to have gotten to where he's gotten deserves a ton of recognition. Sam's TikTok currently sits at 2.3 million followers, while his YouTube has surpassed it amassing 2.97 million subscribers while his Instagram holds his biggest following at a whopping 5 million followers. These days, his average TikTok views are in the multi-millions, and he's gaining hundreds of thousands of views on his YouTube videos, having one of the most die-hard fan bases of any YouTuber out there. And he did it with basically the same wardrobe, minimal editing, and pure and unfiltered authenticity. There's no doubt that his incredible muscular development for his age is what led him to getting that opportunity to be seen. But what he did with that opportunity was take it and run with it. Sam still has plans of competing in bodybuilding and testing his physique among some of the best amateur bodybuilders out there. So there's no doubt that his impending bodybuilding debut will be one of the most highly anticipated of any amateur of this entire generation. And the entire industry is here for it. Those who predicted early on that he was the future of fitness were absolutely proven right. And considering the fact that he's still only 22 years old, the future is looking extremely bright. What can we learn from the life of Sam Sulek? It's that sticking to what makes you who you are and daring to go against the grain is exactly the step you need to take to stand out. Because in a world that pushes and pressures you to be something you're not and traps you in a sea of phonies, authenticity and consistency is your key to standing above the rest. I hope you enjoyed watching the journey of Sam Sulek as much as I enjoyed making it. So if you did, please make sure you leave a comment about your thoughts, like the video so it can get in front of more Sam Sulek fans, and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more documentaries like this one. I'm Large Kofi. Thank you for watching.